everyone needs a toolbox they can rely on. That's why I've spent decades adding and removing tools, playing with new things when they appear, and going out of my way to trim down my set of tools to the simplest, most useful possible group of things. If my toolbox wasn't good, there's no way I could possibly run two YouTube channels, a company, and do all the dev work I like to do on the side. This chaotic world that I've thrown myself into requires a lot of organization, a lot of focus, and a handful of really powerful tools. I'm gonna break this up into parts, so make sure you stick to the end to hear about all the dev tools I rely on every day. First, we're gonna go into general stuff, the things that I think anyone could benefit from using. First and foremost is everyone's favorite, Excaladraw. If you've watched this channel for any amount of time, you've definitely seen my diagrams and graphics all with that handwritten style. I have a secret, my penmanship sucks. I can't whiteboard, I can't draw and have things look the way they're supposed to. It's just not a skill I developed. I actually was almost held back in elementary school for how bad my penmanship was. Excalibur gave me the freedom to express myself with graphics and design. And because of that handwritten style, I don't feel like I have to sit there and perfect every detail. Unlike, to be frank, every other graphic solution I've tried. Doesn't mean those tools aren't useful. We'll get to some of them in a bit. But when I just want to get an idea out of my head in a way that I can share it with others visually, Excalibur is a great way to do it. But what about when I just want to put some text down in a file? Notion has been a lifesaver for me here, both for running the channel and my business and honestly managing my life, Notion has proven essential as a way for me to dump my brain. Notion syntax is Markdown. You can even export Markdown from Notion, which is super handy. Its file management is simple and intuitive where every document can have sub documents just by typing slash page. I use one Kanban within Notion to manage the content going on the channel. But when it comes to really breaking down our tasks and keeping track of things, Linear has been our go-to at Ping. Linear is the subset of Jira I didn't know I needed because God, I can't cannot stand Jira, but Notion is so simple and focused and just generally a great experience. It's made me care about our task management again, which is really nice. There's so many simple details like the copy branch name button. And then when you push that branch up and make a PR, it'll automatically update the status of the issue. Those simple things might sound trivial, but it really makes Linear feel like it understands our needs as developers building product for users. If you haven't tried it already, I highly recommend it. How do we actually talk to the team though? Honestly, we haven't needed Slack for a while. We're all in on Discord. We already have a Discord server to talk with our users at Ping. So we just made a couple of custom channels in there that are private and just for us. Since our users channels are directly above the employee channels, every employee is interacting with and sees the community around us every day. It's proven to be a great way for each person on the team to better understand the users of the product. And we see no reason to make a separate private communication channel that is just us when we can have private channels in our public servers. For my personal tasks, I used to use Notion, but it's a little clunky and I like having a hotkey to quickly type in a task. So I'm using TickTick. It's fine. It does what I need it to. Not my favorite piece of software. I'm not going to sit here and highly recommend it. But I personally like to have a to-do list where this list needs everything done before I go to bed. When I sneak over there to go to bed at night, I pull open my laptop or my phone. I look through that list, make sure everything is done. And if it's not, it gets done and then I'm allowed to sleep. This is essential to my workflow. I have like five things on the list right now that I'm going to go do after I film this video. Funny enough, this video is one of them which is why we're here right now. Seriously, once you get to the point where it feels like there's not enough day to get all the things you need done, you need a to-do list system that guarantees things get done. And for me, TikTok was the thing that worked. Whatever works for you, sticky notes, I don't care. Find something that works and stick with it and don't let yourself sleep until your tasks are done. Once you slip once, you're over. It's done. It's a wash. Speaking of getting things done, getting email done sucks. It's another one of the tools that I don't think everyone needs, but if you've been on the fence and you could justify the price, I do think it's worth it. Superhuman has been incredible for managing my email. I used to be crazy into Outlook. I had tons of hotkeys and a setup that I really liked. Before then, I was into Inbox, the mobile app by Dropbox for email. It was a fantastic experience with this, the simple sliding left and right. Always been an Inbox Zero person. It's important to me. And Superhuman's the first tool I found in a while that really feels like it's trying to get me to Inbox Zero, both on mobile and web, in a way that understands the importance of some of my emails. I was surprised. It's worked well for me. I tried it out on a whim, and I've stuck to it. So if you're unsure, give it a shot. You might be surprised like I was. Those are the things I will not be giving up, but there's two tools I'm trying right now and we'll see how they survive throughout my 2023. 
Those are Cron, the calendar app that was recently purchased by Notion, and Raycast, the replacement for Spotlight for quickly running tasks on your Mac. Both have been pretty good for me so far. It took me a while to cave on Cron. I waited till they had a mobile app, but as soon as they did, I said, fine, I'll give it a shot. Trying it now. It's been pretty solid so far. Wouldn't say it's necessary for my workflow like the other tools. Raycast has been really nice for doing quick math. I love the way that it handles inline saving of numbers and such, but otherwise, yeah, basically just spotlight for me. Enough about general stuff. Let's go into the creator tools quick. I promise this will be fast, but I do think every single person should learn Photoshop. If you use a computer, you should know how Photoshop works. The very basics. I was not expecting myself to ever go in the graphics direction as a kid. I learned Photoshop simply because it was another computer class I could take at my school and I loved taking every computer class I could. And I fell in love. Specifically, I fell in love with removing all the zits from my face. But through that, I spent a lot of time in Photoshop, the a totally legally borrowed copy. And I got good at it. I started helping other people with Photoshop's, both like fixing photos and making graphics happen. I got involved with the team at my school doing the newspaper working with InDesign and I slowly got pretty familiar with all of the Adobe products. I hate them now and wouldn't ever use them and what I'm going to tell you to do instead is use Affinity Photo. Affinity has been phenomenal. It feels like all my Adobe muscle memory works and I can get stuff done. It was like 40 bucks for life. Super cheap, really good. Every thumbnail on my channel was edited in Affinity Photo. It's just great software. Don't pay Adobe's fees. Do learn Adobe's patterns. Photoshop's the single tool I am the most thankful I learned. It has shaped every piece of software I've touched since. On the video side of things, obviously we're using OBS. It's the standard. I have it open on my desktop right here in the tab bar running this recording. I have a bunch of crazy workflows and tools I use around it. One of the essential pieces is an open source tool called Lossless Cut. Lossless Cut is an electron-based FFmpeg wrapper it makes it really easy to drop in a file, pick chunks you want to have saved and export them. I actually export my Twitch markers as CSVs so that I can drop it into the software and it will automatically chop my VOD up into lossless chunks based on when I set markers in the stream. Super useful for sending video files to my editors, especially since I'm often recording a source 4K file on my camera and I can apply the same cuts to that as well. It, it has quickly become an essential part of our workflow. Huge shout out to Mikhail, MiFi, Miffy. I'm not sure how you're supposed to pronounce that. Appreciate you a ton. He deserves a shout out, trust me. For the editing of the videos on my channel, I use Final Cut. Some of my editors do as well. Mir uses Resolve. And honestly, it seems like the industry is moving in the direction of Resolve. Makes a lot of sense. Phenomenal software. Engineering wise, without question, it's the best, technically speaking. But Final Cut feels a little bit like magic. The magnetic timeline makes it so easy to trim pieces, drag things around, and have my editor behave how I would expect when I move something over into a random spot. It makes chops and changes and swaps and all the things I do for this talking head, B-roll laden, Chaos. It makes the style of editing much easier is what I'm trying to say. And I love it. I've tried Resolve. I was deep in Adobe for a while, so obviously I was pretty familiar with Premiere. Final Cut was a very natural transition off and I've not looked back and all my attempts to learn Resolve have hurt me greatly. So yeah, Final Cut for life. I get if you don't want to be on the Final Cut bandwagon though, no hard feelings. And now we get to the thing y'all are here for, the developer tools. First, we should go into my editor. We've already gone into my editor and done terrible things. I'll make sure there's a link in the description to the video where y'all destroyed my editor. Uh, Show the thumbnail too, please. Anyways, <laughs> my editor's pretty simple. I just use VS Code. I let Prettier and ESLint do their thing. I don't really have any interesting extensions on it. Yeah, my VS Code's boring and I like it that way. Do what else is boring? My terminal. I use the stock terminal in Mac OS. I was deep on iTerm. I'm sure a lot of us were, but man, the stock terminal feels faster. It just does. I've swapped around a bunch and found the stock terminal to be the most pleasant experience and it's one less thing to install. Inside of the terminal, I don't use things fully stock. On Mac OS, Z Shell is the default, which is really nice. I still like the things Oh My Z Shell install is like the Git autocomplete and such. I've heard there's better ways that are more performant, but I don't care. I also use Oh My Tmux on alongside obviously Tmux because window management in a terminal feels essential to me at this point. I got into terminals before I ever wrote a line of code. I was deep in, funny enough, GNU screen before Tmux ever existed and expect the ability to press those hotkeys, split windows and manage things in the background. It's just become second nature to me. I don't think anyone really needs it. And honestly, just making tabs in your terminal 
is fine. But if you are one of the people that likes to control everything like the Vim way, y'all know I gave up on Vim a while ago. I cannot stop using Tmux. It is essential to my workflow. I don't use the terminal in VS Code at all. A lot of people use that. Seems fine. Not for me. One more note on my CLI setup there. I love the GitHub CLI. I don't know why more people don't use it, but the ability to create a PR in just like seven characters and have it create the pull request and push and sync origin all for you in one command. Very nice, super handy, highly recommend. For y'all Node and JavaScript users, you might have heard of NVM, the Node version manager for managing the Node version that you're running on your machine. Found it to be a little unreliable. FNM by Schniz, Schlez, Galstar, whatever you want me to call you. I'm sorry, you have too many names. Great dev working at Vercel made a Rust-based NVM replacement called FNM that I have grown to love. It's the thing I use for managing Node on all my machines now, and it has been way simpler overall. And it's really fast. Give it a shot if you haven't. If you're working on systems and development locally, probably try things like Postman before. But when it comes to just running webhooks and accessing data on your endpoints, like faking a Stripe webhook, faking a segment webhook, faking a Discord webhook, because none of the tools really seem to solve that problem well of simulating events, my co-founder, Mark, complained a lot about it, and we decided to build a tool to make it easier. And now we use webhook thing almost every day. Webhook thing, uh, webhookthing.com, oh, we'll throw a link up there, is a simple tool that lets you write some JSON blobs, throw them in a folder in your directory. You can run npx webhook thing, click the events you want to run, and it will hit whatever endpoint you specify. Super simple for running webhooks against your local environments. Makes testing things for this modern serverless world way easier. Super excited to have that out. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. In a similar vein, I really like Prisma Studio. Even when I'm not using Prisma, sometimes I'll quickly generate a schema just so I can use Studio to navigate in the SQL. It's a really nice graphical like table for your SQL. If you're already using Prisma, it's as simple as typing NPX Prisma Studio in your terminal and it will spin up a local environment that gives you full access to your database. Super, super handy. And one last shout out to Create T3 App. Create T3 App was originally a community project created by Nexel based on a lot of the recommendations and tooling that I talked about on stream, he codified all of that into a starter pack that lets you select a bunch of the tools we talk about here, including Prisma, NextAuth, TRPC, and Tailwind. And depending on what you do and don't select, it'll create the best, simplest possible boilerplate with all of those pieces connected correctly. I don't say correctly in the we have opinions way. I mean, we worked with the maintainers of all of those frameworks to make sure all the pieces play nice together as well as possible. If you're using any combination of those tools, you should at the very very least run create t3 app to make sure your implementation is aligned with that implementation and if it isn't that you have good reasons for why it isn't because create t3 app is the recommended way to use all of those technologies together or honestly any subset of them that's all we have if you haven't already watched the video on my 2023 stack infra and my 2023 stack tech make sure you check those out this is just the tooling video those are the ones that talk more in depth about the rest of my stack thank you as always this was a fun one peace nerds